Advanced Google Forms and Docs Using Add-ons, Session 3, Add-ons for Forms. I'm really excited to share with you these cool features and add-ons for Forms. I think Google Forms are super, super useful, and these add-ons are easy to use and are really helpful for making your forms even more useful and functional. The first one is for called Form Limiter and it automatically sets up Google Forms to stop accepting responses. So you can choose to decide, okay, I don't want any more responses after I have a certain number, a maximum number of responses. You could decide you don't want to accept responses after a specific date and time. So for example, if people have to respond and say, I want to help out with the volunteering, and you ask them to respond by May 25th, you can set it that it won't accept responses past May 25th. Also, when a spreadsheet cell contains a specified value, which is a cool feature. Math teachers out there or science teachers, you probably can think of reasons for using the spreadsheet cell containing a specific value. Or business teachers. It's great if an assignment has a time limit. Awesome for event registrations if you can only take a certain amount and great for first come first serve sign up scenarios like for example conferences let's take a look at the tutorial sometimes you need to stop accepting submissions automatically the form limiter add-on for forms will help you to do that let's take a look in the form go to the add-ons menu and choose form limiter and set limits the dialog window opens on the right. One way to limit responses is to set a date and time to close the form automatically. Pick your date, pick your time, check the box if you want an email message to confirm that the form has been closed, and edit the text to display when the form has been closed. Click on Save and Enable. Another option is to set the maximum number of form responses. The form will close when the number of responses is greater than the number you enter, not equal to that number. The last option is based on a destination spreadsheet cell value. In my response form, I've added a second sheet to count the number of people whose first name is Bob. So I'm going to tell Form Limiter where that cell is that knows how many Bobs have registered, and I'm going to set a limit of four Bobs. When I reach that limit, I'm going to close the form entirely. We can see this in action. Bob submits his registration. Another Bob, Bob Smith Jr., submits his registration. That's a total of four Bobs. That's my limit, so I want to close the registration completely and anyone else trying to register will see that it's now been closed. As the editor of the form, I get an email that tells me that the form has now been closed. Form Limiter lets you limit responses based on date and time, number of responses, or values in your spreadsheet. It's another great add-on from Cloud Labs at New Visions for Public Schools. Form Values allows you to store and use selections from multiple choice, list, and checkbox questions. There is no need to manually type them in. Do you find yourself regularly typing in the same choices? Well, Form Values is for you. It could be a list of students, timings, rooms, resources, anything you want. Let's check it out. The nice thing about form values is that it allows you to select pre-created list of items uh, for selection. What I mean by that is if you were to create a question that, uh, that is a multiple choice, a check boxes question, or choose from the list question, uh, you can have pre-created uh, items uh, so that you don't have to either retype them or you can create your questions ahead of time and then populate those questions with choices later on. 
Uh, so it's a time saver, okay? Uh, so let me show you a couple of ways of, uh, of how it works. Uh, first and foremost, so once you download the add-on, uh, you can go ahead and uh, use and create choices. In this case, uh, when you first open the add-on um, and you go to create an edit value list, it creates a spreadsheet for you with examples of what it should look like. All right. So for example, right now there are three different types of choices uh, that you can pre-populate your questions. So uh, let me show you how that would work. Uh, if I were to add a question, a multiple choice question, who is your favorite teacher? Okay. What I can do is after I add the question, I would have to hit refresh. Uh, give it a second, so because it needs to see what questions I have currently in there. So now it, you can see that there's the one question that I created, and now I can say, well, I want the answers uh, uh, pre-populated, or, or the list at least uh, of options to be pre-populated based on the teachers list that I created in that spreadsheet. So once I click on submit, what you will see is uh, the values are now added based on the spreadsheet that's pre-created for you. Okay, so what if you wanted to create your own? Uh, it's very simple, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I'm also going to go ahead and delete all of this. And let's create, let's take this and go ahead and just copy it from what I already made. Okay. So now I have three options that I can use. Uh, as you guys can see, it types of psychology, tech giants, types of economies. Okay, so I'm going to need to ask some questions here. So I'm going to add a multiple choice question. Who is credited for starting, or it's much better, who started Apple Inc. Okay, I'm going to make another question. Uh, let's see what are some other values that I have. Okay, identify the type of economy that best describes U.S. Okay, and then the next one is yeah, just ask something about psychology. Okay, identify the type of psychology that focuses on human interaction. Okay, so now that I have all the questions, I do not have any options for any of those questions thus far. Uh, in order to add it, again, you need to refresh so that it identifies the questions that you have uh, created. Uh, so, for instance, right now, who started Apple? I'm going to add Tech Giants as the options for that. Okay. Uh, for the next question, identify the type of economy that describes the U.S., uh, types of economies. And then for the third question, which is identify the types of psychology that focuses on human interaction. I'm going to make sure that I pick types of psychology. Okay, that is basically uh, how forms values work as an add-on. It's really neat because again, you can pre-create all your questions and then populate it based on what you have on the form values spreadsheet. Now, from this point on, as you create more forms, it's going to keep opening this form values add on a spreadsheet. So you just continue on by adding the different types of options so they can go back and reuse it later on. All right. I do want to add that that spreadsheet is created in your main drive, which is right here. Um, you can move it. So I have a folder called form values. I can move it anywhere. So I clean up my, uh, my drive, but it's going to be the same exact one. So if I create a new Google form, I want to use that add-on, okay, I want to go and edit the value list, uh, it's going to use the same exact spreadsheet. So I just continue an add-on or delete the ones I know I'm not going to use again. Whatever may be, at least you can have a repository of all your different options that you would if you were to create multiple choice questions, lists, and so on. Form notifications is a great way to keep you notified of when someone actually submits a response to the form you sent. If you've ever sent out a form, you know you have to go back and check and see in the responses to see if anybody responded. 
well, form notifications solves this problem for you. It also allows you to create and configure email notifications that as someone submits, they can get a response from you. Now, a short customized response, but yet there can be a response. It allows you to send notifications to yourself, the creator of the form, and other people if you so choose. Let's take a look. I'll go back into my add-ons menu and go to that particular add-on, Form Notifications. For this form, I'm going to configure my notifications. I do want it to notify me when respondents answer. I'm going to choose the web address that I want to be emailed at. And I actually want to be notified every single time a respondent completes the form. That way I can email them back and address them so that I can meet their needs individually. If you are sending a form out to parents or an entire district staff, you may want to have notifications sent to you after every 100 respondents or so to keep your email from clogging up. That is certainly something that you can play around with depending on the application that you're using your form for. You can go from 1 to 100 to 1,000 respondents. And again, I'm going to choose 1. You can also notify respondents after they've completed the form. It gives you a default, thank you for filling out our form, and thank you for responding to our form. This is just a nice way to touch base with those that have taken the time to take your survey or complete your form. Today, I don't want to do that. So simply, I'm getting notified, every one respondent, and I'll get notified to this email address. So I'm going to save these notifications. My settings have been saved. I'm going to view my live form just to test this out and show you. And I'm going to submit the form. Okay. Now you can see that I had in my inbox one popped up here, so I switched over to my inbox. I have from form notifications that a submission was detected. I can go ahead and open that email, and this is just you get the same form and the same notification every time. It'll tell you how many responses you have so far and it will give you links to your sheets. So I'll go ahead to my response sheet and there you can see where I completed the form. Again this is just very quick and easy. It's a quick way to make sure that you get notified when respondents fill out your forms. Makes you available to keep in touch with the people that are taking their time to keep in touch with you. Here's another great one, Choice Eliminator. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to eliminate an option from a multiple choice list or checkbox question after someone has submitted a response. So it eliminates choices that have already been chosen by someone else. So it's great for time slots for conferences or volunteering or having students pick topics without doubling up. Let's see Choice Eliminator in action first, then we'll see how it's done. Here, Jean Poole is requesting an appointment. She's going to take that 9.30 time slot, submit the form, and she's done. Barb Dwyer comes in to choose her slot, but the 9.30 slot's gone, so Barb wants the 10 o'clock time slot. While she's filling out the form, she gets a phone call and is distracted. Meanwhile, across town, Pete Moss is also filling out the form, and he grabs that 10 o'clock slot, clicks on Submit, 10 o'clock is his. After the phone call, Barb tries to submit the form, and the 10 o'clock slot disappears from the form while she's in it, and so she has to choose another time slot. Now let's see how to use Choice Eliminator. First, you'll need to install the Choice Eliminator add-on. 
If you don't know how to install add-ons, watch this video first. Then come back here for a lesson on Choice Eliminator. Choice Eliminator is now added to the add-ons menu. So click on Add-ons, Choice Eliminator, and Start. A dialog will open on the right side of the screen. After the question list loads, find the question you want to eliminate choices on, check the box, that's it, that's all there is to it, the form is ready to go. Click on live form, we'll give Barb the 8 a.m. time slot. When we go back to look at the form, we'll see that the 8 o'clock time slot has been removed. Setting up appointments with Google Forms is now really easy with the Choice Eliminator Forms add-on. But wait, there's more. Choice Eliminator now allows you to set a different limit for each option in a question. So we can use Choice Eliminator with Forms to create a sign-up sheet for breakout sessions at a workshop. Create the question in the usual way, make it a multiple choice or checkbox question. Then go to the Choice Eliminator dialog, find the question, click to expand it, check the box to eliminate choices. Now click on Choice Options. But look, we forgot to fill in the options for this question. So before we can continue, we'll close the Choice Options dialog fill in the option list, click on the refresh button to reload the question, click on choice options again, and set the limit we want for each option. Each options limit can be different. Warren Peace is a pretty popular speaker. We'll put him in a larger room that allows more people to attend. Click on save and our form is now ready to use. Each option in the choice will be eliminated when it reaches its own specified limit. Using the Choice Eliminator Forms add-on, it's easy to create sign-up sheets for appointments and workshops. And that's the end of Part 1 of Advanced Google Docs and Forms Using Add-ons for Forms, Session 3. Please continue and watch the Part 2 video. Do not forget to review the tutorials on the links doc, and you cannot complete the assignment until Part 2 is viewed, just like in Session 2.